From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive this thing called life. Ah, uh, there's nothing like a Trump rally. Keith Allen for the people on this Wednesday, August the 23rd, 2017. So glad you tuned in. If you couldn't make the uh, flight from wherever you are to Phoenix, it's it's okay. I got the audio, and uh, we're going to play it. I, I said we were going to probably do some highlights, but it was just it was just magnificent. It was a Trump rally, and there was a lot of gems in it. And yes, yes, and yes to all the questions that uh, a lot of the pundits asked after the uh, Afghanistan speech. They thought that he was going to go to Phoenix and he was going to ruin himself somehow, and I don't think so. I actually think that it riled up his base in a positive way. There was rubble bullets to a guy's groin area that was disorderly wearing a gas mask. Boy, that must have hurt. And it definitely hurt him more than it hurt any Trump supporter or this country. But a rubber bullet to the groin, not a good thing if you're a male. Uh, John McCain obviously did not show up at the rally, but um, did talk about him. And you'll hear about uh, John McCain and some thinking uh, with Donald Trump and what he had to say about the uh, the, the no vote on health care, which was uh, very deplorable. And by the way, did not set well for those in Arizona that are having a lot of problems trying to just pay for their medication. Here's Donald Trump last night in his glory. Listen in. I believe that it's important that you hear what Donald Trump has to say. These are very important issues, and they are the issues of the day. Still on the attack on the lying, cheating media, but rightly so. But he was a little nicer. You'll hear. Phoenix, Arizona last night at 10 p.m. Eastern. And just so you know from the Secret Service, there aren't too many people outside protesting, okay? That I can tell you. A lot of people in here, a lot of people pouring in right now. They can get them in. Whatever you can do, Fire Marshal will appreciate it. And I want to thank our great Vice President, Mike Pence, for the introduction. As well as my friend, Dr. Ben Carson. And thank you to a very, very special man, Franklin Graham, Reverend Franklin Graham for leading us in prayer. And thank you to Alveda King, the niece of the great Dr. Martin Luther King. It really shows you that America is indeed a nation of faith. We know that. Well, I'm thrilled to be back in Phoenix, in the great state of Arizona. with so many thousands of hardworking American patriots. You know, I'd love if the cameras could show this crowd, because it is rather incredible. It is incredible. It is incredible. As everybody here remembers, this was the scene of my first rally speech, right? The crowds were so big, almost as big as tonight, that the people said right at the beginning, you know, there's something special happening here. And we went to center stage almost from day one in the debates. We love those debates. But we went to center stage and we never left, right? It's all of us. We did it together. You were there at the start. You've been there every single day since. And I will never forget. Believe me, Arizona, I will never forget. 
And I'm here tonight to send a message. We are fully and totally committed to fighting for our agenda, and we will not stop until the job is done. This evening, joined together with friends, we reaffirm our shared customs, traditions, and values. We love our country. We celebrate our troops. We embrace our freedom. We respect our flag. We are proud of our history. We cherish our Constitution, including, by the way, the Second Amendment. We fully protect religious liberty. We believe in law and order, and we support the incredible men and women of law enforcement. And we pledge our allegiance to one nation under God. You always understood what Washington, D.C. did not. Our movement is a movement built on love. It's love for fellow citizens. It's love for struggling Americans who've been left behind, and love for every American child who deserves a chance to have all of their dreams come true. From the inner cities to the rural outposts, from the Sun Belt to the Rust Belt, from east to west and north to south, our movement is built on the conviction that every American from every background is entitled to a government that puts their needs first. It is finally time to rebuild our country, to take care of our people, and to fight for the jobs our great American workers deserve. And that's what we're doing. After our amazing election victory, the forgotten men and women — remember, we used to talk about the forgotten men and women before the election? Guess what? They're not forgotten er anymore, right? Anymore. No, they're not forgotten anymore, folks. In fact, they're trying to figure you out. They're saying, the obstructionists, how do we get them to vote for us? I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. We believe that every American has the right to live with dignity. Respect for America demands respect for all of its people. Loyalty to our nation requires loyalty to each other. We all share the same home, the same dreams, and the same hopes for a better future. A wound inflicted upon one member of our community is a wound inflicted upon us all. You saw last night. You saw last night. Did anybody watch last night? Yeah. When one part of America hurts, we all hurt. And when one American suffers an injustice, all of America suffers together. We're all together. It's time for us to follow the example of our brave American soldiers. And I was with a lot of them last night, Fort Myers. 
No matter where they come from, no matter what faith they practice, they form a single, unbreakable team. That's what we are. We're a team. As a nation, we're a team. They're all united by their devotion to our country and to their mission. It's time for all of us to remember that we are all in the same team. We are all Americans. And we all believe right now in America first. And it's happening, and it's happening fast. I see all those red hats and white hats. It's all happening very fast. It's called Make America Great Again. You see what's going on. It's coming back very fast. We want every child to succeed, every community to prosper, and every struggling American to have a chance for a better life. What happened in Charlottesville strikes at the core of America. And tonight, this entire arena stands united in forceful condemnation of the thugs who perpetrate hatred and violence. But the very dishonest media, those people right up there with all the cameras. So the, and I mean truly dishonest people in the media and the fake media, they make up stories. They have no sources in many cases. They say a source says there is no such thing, but they don't report the facts. Just like they don't want to report that I spoke out forcefully against hatred, bigotry, and violence, and strongly condemned the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, and the KKK. I openly called for unity, healing, and love, and they know it because they were all there. So what I did, so what I did is I thought, I'd take just a second, and I'm really doing this more than anything else, because you know where my heart is, okay? I'm really doing this to show you how damn dishonest these people are. So here is my first statement when I heard about Charlottesville. And I have a home in Charlottesville, a lot of people don't know. Here's the first, can't believe they haven't figured that one out yet, now they know. Now they finally know. But I, I just, I don't want to bore you with this. But I, it shows you how dishonest they are. And most of you know this anyway. So here's what I said really fast. Here's what I said on Saturday. We're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. This is me speaking. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. That's me speaking on Saturday. Right after the event. So I'm condemning the strongest possible terms, egregious display, hatred, bigotry, and violence. Okay, I think you can't do much about it, right? 